Hi right, guys. Just been out getting some firewood after the storm. That's a story in itself actually. But I've been needing to make a video explaining the features of the wax canvas anorak. This is the dark brown one. It's 10 ounce wax canvas. This is the burgundy red, which is about eight ounce wax canvas. Um, <clears throat> I've just hung this up on a canoe paddle so you can see the uh, angle of the arm. So like most active jacket or jackets made for activities, the sleeves are set in high so that you don't get any restriction while you're moving your arms. And that's shown by the paddle going through. The distinctive feature of the, um, well it's a few, but one of the distinctive features of the peak oil wax canvas anorak is these zippers that open up the entire side, it's tied up on the side there, open up the entire side. So that's obviously good for ventilation, but because the zipper continues all the way to the sleeve and then the sleeve opens, the jacket can be thrown back as a cape worn as a poncho or laid out on the ground for a ground sheet, uh, which is also handy for um, when you're wanting to re-wax the jacket. You can lay it out fr flat and just wax it all, heat it all in, uh, much easier to do with the jacket open. Uh, the neck opening is done up with these Targwa nuts um, slot buttons. So rather than stitched on, they're sewn on with webbing threaded making them much stronger buttons, not pulling on any specific stress point on the jacket. There are three plackets to ensure no penetration in storm. The hood, can't show you the hood on this, but there's the size of the hood on the thing, reinforced or given structure up the top to give it a peak, but I always wear a uh, patrol cap or a peak cap in the anorak, so when it's done up, when I turn my head, the peak of the cap turns the anorak, keeping my vision open. The hoods are done up with a basic tie. You just twist once, cinch it up, and twist again to hold it, and then do it up. I prefer that rather than toggles. The toggles, uh, if they're loose, will hit the wind and flap around and hit you in the face. They break, and they're difficult to find to do up and loosen, whereas that's just, as you saw, very quick and easy. Also, Targwa nuts on the sleeve on an adjustable length of uh, webbing. So you cinch it up around your um, wrist. You should go for one that is longer than your arm measurement so that when you cinch it up like that, it's not sitting up there and tight, it's sitting there and loose again so that you get full movement of your arms while the sleeves are done up. Undone just gives you a little bit more ventilation. The pockets big hand pockets positioned high on the anorak so that if you're wearing a pack or any other shoulder slung thing and a waist belt, you can still use your pockets and you can still use the kangaroo pouch. Um, sides are just done up. Again, basic, no, no metal, no toggles. Uh, with these webbing straps, you just cinch them up uh, if you need to stop the wind coming up from under. I think that's about it. There's a rain flap to keep the rain falling away, double layer in the yoke to give it strength. Um, and both of these anoraks are pretty heavily used. So the red, red burgundy will come obviously cleaner than that, but that's what it starts to look like after a bit of patina. Oh, now that reminds me, on the sleeve cuffs in the uh, edge there is kangaroo leather, the strongest, lightest leather you can get uh, to prevent fraying on the edge and in the, these samples it's not the case but there will be kangaroo leather put on the edge of the pockets as well so they're frequently used uh, access points causing a lot of rub uh, if you don't get around to waxing it uh, it can fray away so uh, putting leather there pre pre prevents that hopefully you're getting an idea of the amount of thought that's gone into these anoraks i've been making them for about three years uh, a lot of people have been early adopters. Thank you very much to those people supporting and helping me pr uh, produce these anoraks and develop them. And in the last video or the other video, you should see a uh, full explanation of the costs and timings we're talking about. Timings, I'm not sure I mentioned timings. So the Kickstarter campaign kicks off in somewhere in July, ending somewhere in uh, maybe early August, uh, confirming or not. 
the production, uh, ordering materials on confirmation, ordering materials so that everything is available and ready uh, by October for production through October, November, so that we can deliver to you uh, through December. Everything is triple or double stitched. Uh, in the arm holes, or the, in the set-in sleeve and in the neck, they are bound, so uh, that would be triple stitched and bound. So they are very strong, not going to stretch, certainly not going to give away. The zippers, uh, you're right, a lot of people, and myself included, point that out as a potential fail point. They are YKK metal zippers, uh, but they can still fail. So uh, there's two things going, to, uh, going on there. One is that the, the zipper is set in on the top, so it's very easy to unpick and place back in. Pretty much anyone with a sewing machine will be able to do that. Uh, if though it fails and you know we're near a sewing machine for a few days, there are uh, little loops to um, set in the liner for this that is to come, a wool liner, and those loops can be used to tie it up. That's just emergency use, and if um, for some reason you don't want the zippers at all, it's obviously easy to stitch the whole thing up. Um, I think that's about it for the anoraks. Dark brown in 10 ounce, red uh, burgundy in 8 ounce. Okay, I can't think of anything else. <laughs>